glass box around her and she'll break the glass if you try to cage her in she'll light the match oh she's like an animal it's in her blood she will turn every chain into dust into dust to dust And welcome to tonight's cast of CEA. Tonight, we're going to be the first round of CEA Open League playoffs. I, myself, am coming 1863, and with me today casting is... Calvix, and hello. And first map for IIT and PSA, I believe. I, oh, I'm sorry, I should have introduced them. IIT, Illinois Institute of Technology, and Penn State Academy will be facing each other today. And they will be facing each other in the best of three and the first map will be coastline and some important things to note will be that illinois institute of technology has taken the first seat as they came out first in phoenix division for open open league and psa was second in their league in griffin division so these two will be facing off for the next stage for them to advance to yep and at this point we're going to see an interesting game because i believe to over the course of the day, we're going to at least be seeing coastline, as we saw first, and then border in this particular case. So what kind of thing do we expect to see, especially with PSA attacking first both times? What kind of strats do you think we're going to see, especially with the current meta that we're seeing with both the new operators removed and Lion? Well, I expect them to be as close to Pro League as possible, I guess, since... They have practiced a lot, especially I'd say PSA has been practicing a lot with their um, Division One team, PSU. And they most likely share stress, so I'm expecting them to be showing a lot of variance in Coastline, as the Coastline map itself is small. And the same goes for IIT. IIT definitely will be playing Coastline as their map pick. Yeah, and, and I think it should be favoring. Yeah, so I guess the question is, is that do we think that we'll, so you said it'll be favoring IAT because they, because it is their map. It is their map, and I expect them to be playing well unless it's their map pick. Yep. In this particular case here, I definitely agree. I hope this goes to three, but I think we'll get a better telling after the first few rounds of the first map in terms of who's actually control of each map. As Coastline's interesting in the context of it being small, it means that roamers aren't as good, good in quotes, in the idea of a map like Bank and some other things, mm. particularly like that. Indeed. So it definitely will have an entirely different dynamics. So we'll get to see who is the roaming team and who isn't the roaming team in terms of stylistic play. Now... Both of these maps as are traditionally defender sided, if I remember correctly, right? Both yes, traditionally defender sided. Coastline, especially border two, they are both called defender sided. However, on stream, it's been quite different. Clubs, it's mostly been um, half half. I'd say coastline has been favoring attackers. Border really depends heavily on how well you know the map. Yeah. I would definitely agree, especially when both of these maps have been around for a very long time, so lots of people have lots of reps on them. We're going to end up with a really interesting case here of who is more experienced with the maps and who can adapt faster, especially with the whole six-pick thing that we're doing, which we've been doing all entire season. It's definitely going to be int very interesting as we run into this whole fantastical event. And it looks like we are about to get going in about 30 seconds or less. So this is going to be a great time as we head into bands momentarily. And just a quick lineup explanation. We have Main Jedi, um, Double P, Mechlovin, Irregular Nuts, Audacious Manu from IIT. And for PSA, we have Arms, Jaws, Jumpy Guys, Strike, and Femo Demo. Oh, 
We'll be going into a match in a couple of seconds, I believe. But before that, we can talk a little bit more about how their standings have been. Yep. So this is going to be a, as we said, do we, I have never seen either of these teams, these teams play recently. Have you seen either of them in terms of their strategy or anything similar? I've seen them play in their respective divisions. However, cross division play has been, is only available since the playoffs. So facing each other has not been pretty available. So we have IIT undefeated. From yep. their division. And but PSU not with um, PSA, I should say, my apologies, um, two losses. And we will be heading into match with PSA attacking. Yeah, it is important to note that IAT did not come out unscathed. Undefeated, yes, but there was a tie. Yeah. So, in this particular case, we have the defenders banning first in IAT. Let's see what their first ban is for their attacker ban. They're banning Jackal, which means that they are likely to be the Romer type. I, it is un understandable as a ban to ban Jackal, as most teams have been banning Jackal to make sure the Roamer is, aren't as pressured as the five tracks come down to chase the Roamers down. Yeah, and, and it's... Ooh, a glass ban. Glass ban is one of the other few, at least on Coastline, that is very traditionally banned. Is Even though the map is small, there are lots of long sight lines that can be opened up and held by glass. And I think they'll definitely change when the glass rework comes out, whenever that actually happens. So I think that will definitely be... The glass will be a mainstay ban on Coastline, at least until that comes out. Indeed. Too much power as to just right-click and just walk in the corridor looking for yellow highlights. Yep, and now we're going to see what our second, our first defender ban is going to be. And it's going to be Legion, which means that PSA is likely going to want to do a fast push style, either that or leverage shield significantly. Definitely am. Maybe looking forward to a Monty pick? Because not having a Legion makes it so much easier for the Monty to enter, making space for the other attackers to come in. Yeah, I think that's a good point too, is especially if we expect lots of shields, we're going to be in an interesting case where how well can people see four? And this will be a great test on people's C4 skills. To see four, especially, you need to know how the map is laid out vertically. And it'll be a test of knowledge too. And Echo Band coming from IIT. Which means that we're going to have Maestro up, which means that he will be the main dude guy that we'll be seeing in terms of main three armor uh, plant defense. And we're going to be in an interesting state where smokes aren't going to be particularly amazing, even though we already took four smokes off the board. That means that smokes are still going to have less utility as before, as we see here on the defense, at least initially, or on the, on the attacker side initially. We did see a glimpse of a ying, which definitely gains a little bit of edge, especially with a maestro going to be in play. Mm -hmm. So, and as we've seen, or as we've like expected, that we thought there'd be a Monty, maybe a six pick into it, as Jaws hurriedly picked a sledge before his reveal phase happened. Almost it looks like they were expecting him to go kitchen at least from the outset, but this whole setup here is not what we expect. And yeah, there we see the six pick onto Monty for the uh, attacker side, and then a six pick onto Valkyrie from the defender side. So here, at least in terms of our spreads, we have a Rook, Jaeger, Maestro, Mute, and Valkyrie on the defense, and a Buck, Monty, Thermite, Thatcher, and Capitao on the offense. So, especially with doing hook of billiards first, as we've learned that the good old projector master bedroom has fallen out of favor lately, with both kitchen and the hookah being favored over that. What do you think is going to be different here, especially with the six pick onto Valkyrie in terms of how the attackers will try and, or how the defenders will try and leverage the unknown operator? Oh, well, definitely Vox will be putting camps off site for the roamers and Maestro mainly focusing on site and having a capital to face against. They will be ignoring, be, um, ignoring the ADSs placed by the Jaeger. However, it should, should still be enough for the Maestro to get um, vision and intel for the team through the smokes as Maestro eyes are immune to the smoke to be able to see. Yep, and it looks like we're going to have a Valkyrie run out as the round has started, just tossing the camera out over on poolside. And it looks like we're going to be have at least three people on site in that wall being as pesky as it always is. Because for whatever reason, shotguns really don't like getting rid of the granular particulate in that wall. So now, as we move into the attack step, it looks like we're doing a fairly standard hold up in Hookah Bar with the Monty approaching from the from the aquarium side, actually, keeping an eye on all the windows. 
Valk's on there. It looks like Valk got a run out kill while placing the cam on the Thatcher. That's gonna make that Maestro significantly better, especially since they can't really remove it without frags. And with the Jaeger there, that means that removing any of the ADS is going to be a significant problem, which may mean that they're gonna have to push from a different side. Most likely, or they have to play vertically with arms on Buck. Yeah. To get those ADSs before entering. And Joss just, just hanging yeah. out the Kuka deck. Yeah, then there's that Valkyrie we saw downstairs, actually just maybe getting an eye as we see down there in the lower left of valkyrie holding her own down there in bar and we're going to see if that actually brings anyone to fruition if someone just mindlessly walks in there could be the monty has eyes on them as we're getting our views here and it looks like the vault was chased out of sunrise bar giving strike the opportunity to take around take control of blue bar yeah, and that C4, let's see if that C4 actually pans out. It looks like the Valkyrie will wait to C4, so that Monty will live to see another day. And it looks like a smoke bolt is going to be used, at least to push up, which means that this is one of the better places. Oh, no, they're going to try and push up the Valkyrie that isn't there. Unfortunately, the Asphyxiation Bolt is now used as ARMS takes out a uh, regular. So that's the Maestro down, which means that there's an extremely high value here, and that's a with C4 taking out all the barbed wire, which is going to make it really hard for IAT to make any headway. As Audacious Man who takes out arms somehow through the wall. And McLovin also finds Strike with a head, and Audacious finds another one, a jumpy guy, and now it's up to Joss, the lone Monty, being pressured by three defenders on Cool Life stairs, and will be taken down with a headshot from the vault. Audacious giving a 4k this round. Interestingly enough, I don't think that Valkyrie really provided any realistic utility. If you look at how people entered the building, aside from getting some early spawn kills, right? There wasn't really any help that that camera seemed to have. It just happened, and then the Maestro died, and then everyone else died. So it looks like there was an attempted aquarium push, and then it just completely... Aquarium and or pool push, and that just completely fell through. They were four. Two positioned on the stairs, two in VIP, and the Valk came out unscathed not punished at all and yeah. that just gave the round to iit yeah at this point we're now moving to penthouse theater which is definitely usually the third site these days so it's interesting going to it second with the use at least initially of a mirror which is something you don't normally see and especially with a buck now it's going to be harder to keep those mirror windows shut and it looks like at this point we have a mirror jaeger maestro mute and doc on the defense and on the attacker side we have a buck monty thermite thatcher and capital so we have the same composition on the attacker side as we saw before and on the defense there is a slight different skew and instead of a rook we see a doc and instead of a maestro we do see a maestro and i forget who switched out for the mirror that must have been the valkyrie that we saw switch out for the mirror Double double Pia has been staying on the Jaeger, and I believe Audacious was the Vulcan, is now on the dock instead. So that means that our good friend Mayor there, if I remember his name correctly, he then in that case was the one who was on the the rook that we saw before. And swapped so off to the mirror, yes. Yes. So yeah, in this case it looks like we're gonna see some interesting roam play, whereas there are only roamer realistically is a Jaeger in terms of armor alone. So let's see how well that uh, mute will be outside. Is that mute using a shotgun? Because that'll tell us a fair amount about where he's gonna be chilling. And as we see here, we see a normal attack from the front, just trying to get things going. And I think whether or not the mute has a shotgun will be a big tell as to where he's going to sit on site. Oh, the barricade's broken on the top. Usually missed out by a lot on the attack operators as they walk in, and arms will just be hanging around up to yep. the top, looking to open penthouse um, hatch. Yeah, and directly enough, one important thing to note now is now that they expect a Monty, we now have three C4. Or two? Two C4, I apologize. Which is, I believe, a little bit more than possible as Jaeger is holding the traditional position behind in the front lobby as he runs away back to kitchen. Looks like. Jaeger, Double P is the only one hanging around first floor trying to defend it away from the attackers as the other four will be hanging around in VIP or on site. 
Yeah, as our good old friend Jaeger is now holding her on blue bar, it looks like we're gonna might be able to get someone from the stairs. Is that Monty gonna be seen? No, we saw the wrong side of the shield, so it looks like you might be able to actually pick up someone else. And if you're looking there, you just saw the head of one other, just barely Man, missing the bucket. Barely barely on this two people, possibly two kills, that could have favored IAT early on. Yeah, so that would have been the Thatcher that would have been killed through the hole, and I'm pretty confident that. Uh, PSA does not know that there is that hole downstairs. As PBT takes out Jumpy Guy, which means that that wall is now closed as the thermite is taken off of the board. How do you yeah, yeah. not having a hard breach is going to make it extremely difficult for PSA to be entering the site, especially when Penthouse is usually the default open with the hard breach. Yeah, now with Amandi in sight, back facing the Maestro, do you think this is going to be really interesting? Because I expect, oh no, it bounced off of the Monty shield. And now there's just a C4 he's there. being chased from the back. Yeah, and now the the mirror had time to pick up the C4. And especially with the Monty being trapped there. You managed to get two because he threw it on the wall. Jedi takes out Jaws and Strike with that creative C4 intending to only take out the Monty. That positioning was rather unfortunate as we only have both Thatcher and Buck left. Doc is low, he's gonna stim himself up at least back to 75%. As he gets flipped again, that's him basically accounting to nothing as Audacious now takes out uh, Fimo and now we're in a very specific situation where we're in a 1B. More situation as a regular then takes out Arms as he's trying to push in from VIP. Or Hall of Fame more accurately. Only the Monty ever got to enter the site in the theater. Yeah, that's an interesting push, right? As soon as the hard breach died, there was there was basically nothing else that happened because they tried to get in and they weren't able to get in because the even the three speeds managed to rotate off of site. Mm -hmm. And it generated a situation where it was actively difficult for the attackers to get in, especially with the Thermite dying first. As we see here, we have a Mirror of Valkyrie, Maestro, Mute, and Smoke, at least initially, which definitely signals a kitchen service entrance defense as that's really the last um, bomb site that you would likely see, especially in a three-site uh, rotation. And at this point, we see the Valkyrie being six picked onto a Jaeger as the as the attackers are taking a slightly different skew, especially seeing an IQ. So, it looks like they are now exchanging the IQ for a Monty, as that Monty strategy has not necessarily worked out. Let's see if they can actually land something in Kitchen this time around. So in this case, we have a Jaeger, Smoke, Mira, Maestro, and Mute on the defense. On the attacker side, we have a Buck, Monty, Thermite, Twitch, and Capital. With Amonti, the first thing that comes to my mind is the little service entrance push with Amonti and trying for a quick plant without getting disturbed as much from the ADSs or the Maestro Eye. Yeah, especially with only 2C4 here, it's going to be a really interesting time of trying to clear out the Monty since it will really depend on who is actually in bathroom and they don't actually have any impact. So we'll have to hope that the smoke creative uses the shotgun properly and makes it so that good C4 is going to be thrown. It looks like that's exactly what's going to happen. So I do believe we expect the smoke to be playing in bathroom at this time. Oh, late ADS is being put down and his crew will be fine as he agrees that he will be on site and he will not risk his life while doing this. And, and all five spawning at main entrance side. Yeah, that definitely is going to be an aggressive uh, quick plan for the look here. Capital going to try and pull his weight here using more than what we've seen before as he's opening up the service entrance door, spraying into the bathroom, opening, driving some people out. Meanwhile, Smoke looking for a long angle. Smoke and this their throw all the way from. And I saw. Yeah, and I believe that's one canister actually used from bathroom already. As I believe I saw the actual one. You've had the maestro setting up a wall. So we're going to end up in an interesting situation, as especially we see that drone mounted up high, and I don't believe anyone saw it. I believe it's on top of a box there. As uh, Double P is now coming around to see if they can loop from the back to get a view of main entrance. And it looks like Double P will be holding in security the furthest room from the site across the map. And it looks like Buck is going to try and get some vertical control of the bathroom. And it looks like, ooh, they did actually manage to shoot one of the gas canisters as you saw there. So I believe that's at least one gas canister down. 
as the buck now has control as he now takes out the smoke which means that we have a lot of plants now especially with only one gas charge even thrown but not actually leveraged so uh psa here is actually fairly favored with only two c4s left to deal with the monty and second floor control and penthouse given up so early and not even contested by iic and first, first c4, c4 goes out, out and misses but damaging the monty with a bar of health yeah, and it looks like the mute got clipped while trying to peek around the mirror window. Let's see if the proning can catch his little feet. And nearly got him. His arms takes out a regular all from the upstairs. That means the maestro's also down too as we use the second asphyxiating bolt here to be able to try and flush every single person out of that side. Now, smokes are going out to see if we can now actually plant the diffuser backwards. Oh, strike. You don't have the diffuser. You're not supposed to be crouching in there. And speaking of the demo, it takes down double P. And main takes Jumpy Guy away, and it will be Jaws trying to reverse yeah. plant. Yeah, no, all the C4's gone. The shield is doing its job as he gets it down and whiffs on the Monty as the Mishra gets the big main takes out strike and arms takes out main, and now it's in a 3v2 situation. Let's see if the mute can clutch this out with now everybody jumping outside to try and prevent that, and arms takes out McLovin in an oh, actual man. fantastical attack that it actually worked out extremely well they managed to bait out both the c4s and take out the smoke early which made it really easy for them to and be later. able to get and having penthouse control especially just having that vertical control flushes everyone out of kitchen using the firebolts too from capital and all they had was a mirror facing from kitchen into service entrance to try to deny with a couple fires yeah, even though they were running two mirror windows, both facing that service engine, the second one put up late, it didn't actually do anything since they seeded a penthouse control so early. And now we're going back to hook a billiards, which is a very, very successful defense first time around. And it looks like we're going to be running the exact same lineup we saw before, except with the visual tossed into the mix for the defense. And on the attacker side, basically nothing has changed except for that Thatcher that we've seen so frequently before, now turning into a Twitch, which is what we had seen the last round. Now that Rook is going to be six-picking into something else, as the attackers are all locked in, it seems, and that Rook is oh, going to be a Rook. <laughs> and that, So that doesn't change much, but in more of an interesting play, especially seeing a Vigil, we see that Capital changes it to jo Jokebi. So on the defender side, we see a Jaeger, Vigil, Rook, which turned into a Rook, a Maestro, and a Mute. And on the attacker side, did I say defender side? Yes, I did. And on the attacker side, we have a Buck, Monty, Thermite, Twitch, and Jokebi. How do you think the inclusion of Dokevi will actually change the attacking dynamic to try and get them the edge on this attacking Hoka? Good look at that. We first have to go back to round one when they held, um, when the IIT tried to hold this defense. And the bulk from Audacious um, got one spawn peak, I believe, will run out, and then got two. And not having the roamers cleared out early on while trying to push on site, collapsing altogether. Cost PSA the round, but they most, they're most likely bringing the Kokevi to make sure the roamers are clear before the Monty enters the site. Yeah, I would definitely agree because they definitely have to clear out the downstairs uh, sunrise bar, otherwise there is no way they're going to be able to get in there. Though, interestingly enough, we do only see one C4 from the defense, and that's it in terms of actual realistic plant denial, because they have the good old... Frag grenades, they might be able to take out Maestro's, but that's really about their only option right now. Jaeger, uh, the double P here is sitting in Penthouse, as Penthouse has been opened. Let's see if the drone will actually spot double P. Now the drone's coming towards double P, and he goes unnoticed as of now, but the two drones are going through Penthouse. One misses! And the second one? I saw two. The second one, I think, went over into... Nope, now it found him. It now found him. Hopefully. We, we hope. <laughs> Please tell me you found him. And oh no, it's the it. <gasps> Running into the trophy. What are you doing? There's the Yeager sitting Yeager. in penthouse. Oh no. I don't think the buck knows either. Let's see if the buck drops and sees. But Yeager is now in there. Is he going to see it? And the Yeager has called oh, the audacious for a backup. Uh, Oz takes out. Arms takes out audacious somehow. It must have been a bang through the wall. Not entirely sure how that exactly happened. And then uh, Arms then takes out PP because Arms was actually all the way in Penthouse. I don't know where that second kill actually came from or where Audacious exactly was. So now it looks like 
uh, PSA is now in the driver's seat, having taken control of Tidy Penthouse and cleared out both the roamers, and Jumpy Guy's getting eyes on the Maestro there and getting hit for a fair amount by the Alba. And two minutes gone from the clock, and with only one minute remaining, there's, it's a 5v3 in favor of PSA. Yeah, it is important to note that the almost IIT is definitely winning on the health side. Relatively, of course, with two people at half, it's functionally like three and a quarter people against two and a half. So they're actually doing pretty okay now that the ADS has been taken out. So now the smokes actually work, and now the mute is stuck with a Monty on the other side. And the mute, he just lets the mute run by. And whiffs and strike manages to take out McLovin here, as now we're in a 4v1 or a 5v1 situation. Yikers, as, far, as Femo takes out a regular, and now main Jedi is just stuck all the way back in Aquarium. I don't think he has that. complete side control at this point. Yeah, I don't think they know exactly where he is, but it's definitely not going to be an easy retake. Especially now that he's shot so that PSA now knows exactly where they are. Stay behind me. Oh, shot through the wall. And... and Femo, pistols, main Jedi to death. And PSA will be taking round four, I believe, evening out into 2-2. Two to two. Yep, this is definitely a 2-2. Two to two. I do believe that the hard inclusion of the... Dokebi put the fear in them because I actually don't believe that a Dokebi call is used even once. Yeah, especially. And Dokebi calls, even if the calls went through, it's only 12 seconds. All you have to do is wait it out on site with so many heavy anchors like Maestro or Rook. Yeah, I know that's definitely the case, but I'm talking about at least in terms of clearing out the two roamers. I don't believe that, especially with the kill onto uh, Audacious. I don't even know how that happened because I don't believe there was a call sent out. No calls were sent, I believe, and all the issues, I believe, tracking back was in the white hallway next to the little baggages. On the oh, top of I'm just confused about how Buck got them, because Buck jumped into Penthouse and managed to get ball, so I don't know where Audition was. It must have been rotating into um, Projector at the time and took him to out first double instead of double. double. Yeah. So in this case, we saw something sick picked into a dock for their defense downstairs or in their penthouse defense so it looks like here we have a jaeger doc mira maestro and mute for the defense for the offense we have a buck monty thermite twitch and okebi and it seems like the attackers deciding don't change what isn't broken and they're gonna try and run it right back and see if they all have the same level of success they saw before and i believe this is um iit's last round for defense on coastline until yeah. the side swap for psc and iit yeah, I definitely this is 100% a pivotal round here to see who actually gets favor into the ostensibly defensive favor map. Now at this point... Everything's pretty default from the Mira and the Maestro. Yeah, nothing particularly amazing. The Maestro position did change though, if you notice. He switched the wall to the left hand wall instead of going directly next to the breach going. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know if that will make any direct impact, but it is a notable difference in terms of... It looks like the Maestro is going to be chilling in our best friend cabinet, which ha for whatever reason has no shelves. Which I've never particularly understood, but you know. Yeah. Uh, if he fits, he will sit just like a cat. Yep. Now we have the Twitch coming in, seeing if the Twitch will be able to find anything useful. Mainly those mirror windows, as there is no, there is a mute this time, and they have no particular good, good way to clear unless they go underneath into lobby and clear that whole mess out. Or did they not mute the door? That'd be unfortunate oh, if they didn't mute the door. Oh, unfortunate, but the shock drone goes down, and it'll be up to the jumps, just fun checking. <gasps> Major. Oh, that hole! It's the hole that we knew about from last time they went up here, and it finally got someone. And the hard breach is down again early. Which is going to make it incredible. the hard, hard breach. The last time before, it was uh, Double P running around downstairs with the Jaeger, but this time it was the hole that wasn't leveraged in the first time they defended. We knew about it, and we saw the Mira not taking it. Not taking the shots that were definitely there. Because nobody knew PP was there. Strike does the quick peek with the DMR. Hacking. And you end up with a case where Strike somehow lives at a sliver of health, and now all the f all the cameras are hacked, which means we got view into the Maestro cams so that they know exactly where those are, providing lots of information for the defense, especially since Maestro cams are, are the attackers, as Maestro cams are especially hard to remove. And it'll be up to Irregular to a little bit change the angles around, and oh, the ping's down on the mirror. 
Ooh, that's a whiff there on that side as Arm still manages to take out the dock winning the dumb fight against Audacious there. Let's see if the second frag will end up coming out as I Yep, and Arms with the shotgun coming in hot, taking out McLovin as well from below. And the pings from the Maestro Cam actually ending up being deadly as somehow, even though they have no hard breach, the buck is doing work and basically cleaning up the entirety of the protector. Irregular had to change the angle on the Maestro Cam before this happened. This, this is costing IIT their almost two rounds with 40 seconds left. With only two people left? Yeah, this is 100% likely going to cost the because I don't know exactly where both people are. So now if they push anywhere near Penthouse, it looks like there's going to be a near slaughter for the people focused on the Monty. And nobody's sitting in theater. Nobody's looking at theater. It's all focused on Jaws. And the Twitch will be entering the demo. Looks for the Maestro, but doesn't connect. Dances and around, takes a little bit off of health there. 10 seconks left. is uh, running out of time. And arms has to find the Maestro and will find two. Main Jedi and Irregular Nuts get taken out by arms and PSA will be taking round 5, taking before the round swap to their favor. Yeah, another side note there, arms managed to land a 4k with the glory of the shotgun through the floor. So now we- IIT had a number advantage, especially with the one being down, being a hard breacher, th um, Thermite. But having- the Maestro cam is hacked. You have to change the direction so it doesn't give as much intel as, as it should be. Yeah, I'm surprised that because you still have control of it unless they're looking at it, right? So you'd have to think that they would have figured after two people basic functionally dying from the Maestro cam not being moved, that they would have figured out that's where it came from instead of a drone. Also, I don't entirely know if they were looking at cams at all after it was hacked. That's something oh, we're not entirely no. sure about. But it looks like we're going on the spice train here for IIT's attack. We have a Thermite Thatcher, Finca of all things, Twitch, and a Maverick switched off of Blackbeard. And on the defensive side, we have a Doc Smoke, uh, Maestro, Castle, and Jaeger. And doing a traditional castle defense for Hookah, which is something we don't normally see these days. It's a little bit irregular, but still something within the normal radar. Looks like with the Finca, they are, um, INT is looking for a little bit faster paced push onto site. However, to counter that, Jaws is bringing smoke, so it'll be rather interesting to see how well this will turn out. Yeah, I think it's going to be interesting, especially with the castle there. I don't know exactly what he is going to castle. Traditionally, one of the things you castle is the aquarium door and then blow out the sidewall. We'll see if he actually does it or, some, or do some more unorthodox strategy. Oh, Arms making some quick punch holes from hallway into theater and penthouse, looking for any penthouse faults. Gets spotted and is going to have to move around. Yeah, now we're just starting the attacker side. It looks like the we're going to be castling off Hookah, which is definitely an irregular. And I do believe that that pool window is actually wide open. Pretty confident. What sight line does that open up? I guess that opens up downstairs, right? And Where opens up into office, into the connector between security and office. Yeah, that's office. That's tight. Yikes. You just gotta hope someone comes that way. If Double P gives them the signal, then we'll end up knowing if that ends up panning out. So it looks like we did actually castle the pool window, and we're gonna end up in the. So that means that there are. It's gonna be hard at least to breach there. They have no particular soft breach realistically, except for the Maverick. Mm. Yikes! Unless Don't get up. Got... Oh my! Don't get it's up only... from prone behind that bar. If only that was completely penetrable. Maestro would be dead. And it looks like Audacious is trying to quickly push in. Yeah, let's see if they manage to clear the ADSs out because the frags will not actually be able to work. Actually, I think they were cleared out as we see that Twitch roaming around down there underneath the little bed. So it seems like all the aces were cleaned up and the Maestro cam was taken care of. As they now know exactly where the Maestro is, we'll see if a light lob frag will end up in that particular direction since all the ADSs are gone. As oh, Audacious is just running inside, and the Maestro is ready for him, just taking him clean out. Jumpy guy, only losing a third of his health, just go, just wipes the floor with the Alda. Not even having to reload as you'd expect. That was very rushed from Audacious. Taking a really heavy gamble. Yeah, and we see a regular here on the pool window being opened. And it looks like they see the Castellanos as a drone, and he does, but now... 
regular now knows exactly where the castle is. And the castle is ostensibly pinned or not, since the regular is now rotating over to the aquarium door. Oh, looks like the regular is going to chuck a frag grenade, but will not find anyone. Yeah, it doesn't look like anyone got damage from this. The only one still damaged on the defense happens to be the Maestro, and there's only 45 seconds left. And basically nothing has happened. Someone has incidentally died, but no real push has happened. Nothing has been particularly cleared out except for a few windows open. And we're in just a really awkward situation for the attackers. And this is McLovin. Casing people around here. Fuka, one on, one on stairs. And oh, Finka has entered the site. Prince going down. And uh, he picks out strike and draws. Refrax to their regular. Oh, taking out regular nuts. And. 18 seconds, Plant still has not gone down, and Jaws takes out double P. And now Twitch jumps in as we end up with Jumpy Guy taking out McLovin and Main Jedi taking out Jumpy Guy and Jaws. And now we're in a 1v2 situation favoring the defense. Let's see if the Thermite can stick it before the dock in the castle find him. And they do, having def letting the defenders in this case win the round. Arms taking that final kill from the rotation hole from stairs. So rushed and going in one by one from a, one from the window from from the door, and everything fell apart trying to rush in the last thirty seconds. Yeah, I feel like as soon as the first kill happened with the Maverick and that not panning out and no one else pushing with him, the whole attacker side just ended up falling apart. They had the good push set up, but as soon as the Maverick died, they weren't entirely sure what to do. We were so lost, but however, IIT looks like they were bringing Finca again. Yeah, it almost worked out, I like to say. And on at least on initial face value, it looks like basically the same thing, except for a Zofia palette swapped out for the Twitch we saw before. And in this case, in the six pick, we're only going to see two whole six pick, which is the maximum number we can have. We have a Valkyrie switch onto a Vigil and the Buck switching onto something. We'll see how that ends up panning out. So. On the uh, attacker side, we have a Thermite, Thatcher, Finca, Zofia, and Buck switching on to Buck, as we saw before, IAT being fairly confident in their pick so much they're going to use a six-pick on it. And then on the defensive side, we have a Vigil, which was six-picked onto a Mira, a Maestro, a Smoke, and a Jaeger. So importantly here, even though they have no shields, there is only one C4. This is the same lineup that IAT brought to the Fen Kitchen, except the only difference would be that it's not a mute. It's the visual this time to roam around. Yeah, it looks like they have two dedicated roamers in this particular instance, so we'll see if the losing a C4 will actually impact the attack side. Because there's only now a smoke, and without a shielder, C4s matter a little bit less, even though, of course, still very, very important in preventing the defense on the service entrance. And oh, this entire wall, the south wall and kitchen is unreinforced, and even the jumping are reinforced too, there's one left. We're also in an interesting situation where there is now an evil eye over in uh, Sunrise Farm, which, if I remember correctly, is not a particularly normal situation for that to be in. Most likely for enough intel for a strike to be holding, holding near both arms and oh, two. Let's oh, see if they can. Entered. Yeah, let's see if they can time the frags correctly to see if they can blow up that Maestro cam. And it looks like it was gotten, so that's one Maestro cam down. But also, that means a frag grenade is also gone. So now they're stuck with th only three frag grenades left. As Fink uh, in a regular is now watching Blue Bar. Possibly a waste of a Maestro cam. Besides, the, the only thing it gave was that there's three people entering who, um, on the um, Sunrise by my apologies. Yeah, I don't think it was necessarily worth it, as it was probably at least a little bit more beneficial to put it on site looking into there. Like on the far wall, like above the um, the pre preparation tables at the end near the sink. Mm -hmm. That may have been slightly better instead of putting it all the way in hookah. So, in this particular case, here, let's gonna see if Vigil's going to be able to lever something. As Jaws with the Mira shotgun takes out Audacious and a regular, nux or a regular takes out Jaws in this particular case. So the refrag's coming out hard, losing a C4. So now there are no C4s left and one smoke canister gone for the death of a buck. Which means that we still have two frags left as one was already used to take out the Maestro cam. And all of is going to find nobody is in kitchen. And no, and the diffusers on the other side. If you look at the diffusers over in bathroom, and I don't think anyone's 
really inside is thermites now running around hopefully we only to be able to dodge back up to plan yeah jumping guy takes out a regular now so now there's actually nobody on site for psa here and let's see if the vigil will see the thermite jump in and he does the vigil taking a fair amount of health off of the thermite thermite being at half now as he managed to escape out blue bar side and strike takes out main jedi the ping is coming down cost him his life and it's up to double p and McLovin. And double P takes out strike in the lobby and the camp too. It will be up to the smoke behind the mirror and it's a 2v3. Let's with see 30 if. Seconds left. Yeah, with 30 seconds left, let's see if uh, double P can see the little feetsies of the maestro, which he definitely can. And manages to take out Jumpy Guy. Now we're in a 2v2 situation, but with two smokes left, it's going to make that really interesting. And it also the diffusers down in the middle of the in the center of there as Arms comes in and takes out double P. Now we're in a 1v2 situation. Gotta check gotta those check corners. The... Gotta check those corners before you enter. It's yeah, three like... seconds left and the plant's going down. McLovin's going to get flanked really soon by arms, and arms will be knifing McLovin to death. Getting PSA an advantage in terms of round differential. And now we are at map point. By my math, and also the whole game telling us that that is particularly the case. So this is definitely something that we didn't particularly expect, as if we did mention, right? This was IIT's map. This was IIT's map, and ARMS, if you go back to the scoreboard, is double digiting with 14 kills right now. Yeah. Yeah, he's the only one, if you look at here. Um, everyone is actually doing particularly well, but it looks like ARMS is doing the interesting heavy lifting here, at least from the fragging side, but that doesn't mean that the support people aren't doing anything. As we saw, the people playing support were critical in the success of the last penthouse defense that we saw mm -hmm. because the supports even though not getting a lot of kills managed to get the critical camera that let arms wreak havoc from below so now here we're back in penthouse with both a buck yeah with a buck thatcher thermite blackbeard monty blackbeard being interesting and then on the defender side we have a pulse from below mira maestro smoke and jaeger this is the first time Pulse has been dropped during this match today from IIT and PSA, and Pulse will most likely be expected to be playing around Kitchen. Yeah, and do you think that they'll actually change the dynamic as the we saw one successful defense so far without a Pulse? Do you think that the addition of a Pulse will actually be beneficial here? Um, to firstly point out, the Pulse pick was a 6 pick, so IIT, unless they drove out, they do not know Pulse exists on the board yet. That's actually, yeah, I agree. That's very, very important to note. And unless they figure out pretty soon they are about to get flanked in kitchen if they try to enter Sunrise Bar or Blue Bar. Yeah, it looks like we're going to have two people in kitchen particularly. As you saw, I believe the Jaeger is also downstairs, which leaves just the Smoke Maestro and Mira on the second floor. As it looks like they're going to be trying to do a hookup push this time through VIP and Hall of Fame. We'll see how that ends up panning out with both the Blackbeard and Monty pushing together. Only one committed to clearing out first one. That'll be audacious with the job of clearing out Kitchen to make sure it's safe for the Monty and the Blackbeard. Oh, inching well, closer and closer to Arms. arms. Well, Thatcher, who will see the who will see each other first? As now Arms now knows that the wow that the thatcher is there as audacia takes out arms let's see if the jaeger is going to be able to refrag pushing the into arms from the bathroom as the camera gets taken out it looks like no refrag will be had and that c4 is now taken off the board c4 and all the potential intel they could have gotten from the pulse cardiac sensor off the board that is critical and it looks like we have the black here that monty already in vip and Hall of Fame just holding that angle, at least the Blackbeard doing a pretty good job, and his Monty is just feeding IAT. And as Strike takes out uh, Double P here, we are now in a 4v4 situation with one smoke canister used. Now the buck is gone, which means that their feet are safe, at least for the most part, unless you can use some creative uh, exploration with the DMR that Blackbeard has. As Audacious manages to take out Jumpy Guy, who was proning next to the wall. I believe that was just a throw can that did literally nothing. I don't even know where that throw can went. 
Oh no, no. it no. takes down Josh, the, not the, um, the mirror, but also takes away his teammate, the Monty. Not audacious. Frag fire. Frag's back with the strike, but. Oh, Femo. Oh, the, the smoke from below with the shotgun and the sliver of health in a dream. Let's see if the smoke can manage to clutch this out as the thermite's fairly low, seeing that Claymore and shotgunning people to death from basically every conceivable. Let's see if they watch the side coming all the way around from Aquarium and if that actually ends up ending up because it looks like that's the loop that Smoke is going to take. Oh, creeping in. But still enough enough time for him to um, get a 2k and yeah. counter defuse. However, Main Jedi will be taking down Femo Demo and will secure round 8 for IIT. Yeah, a roller coaster of emotions during that little fight with Blackbeard. Taking, taking down one, but also taking his teammate. Yeah, that was definitely rather unfortunate That's that that ended up happening. Fortunately, it did not have an impact on the round, but you definitely want to avoid that, especially as a Monty. They're supposed to be nice to you. You don't want to hurt your Monty. You want to be friends with them because they will help put up their shield and protect you. And a fuse! Let's see if the fuse sticks. Well, one thing that's been pretty famous among the community has been fused with the ballistic shield and the PMM with the laser sight on it. Because it is almost like a DMR. I believe it does 67 damage or somewhere around there. It right? hits hard. Yeah. yeah, it does some crazy amount of damage. At least in this case, it looks like we got to see a fuse, a yin coming in for the first time today for the IQ. And Ash, a Monty, a Thatcher. And then on the uh, defensive side, we have a Jaeger, Smoke, Maestro, Castle, and Pulse moving to be a Valkyrie. So it looks like they're going to skew more informational, assuming that that IQ was going to be six picked off. But double P with the Ying. PSA may not be ready for this. Yeah, I feel like this is going to be an interesting time, especially for a B push where all the explosions are going to be having, Yings are going to go out, and Smokes with with only a maestro to save them, which may or may not be gone by the time Fuse is done with his job. Um, yeah. the placement going a little bit lost. lost but... Looks like Billiards to frame the table will be gone. Castle's off. Yep, and it looks like they're gonna reinforce one side and use the impact to blow up the other, which then also means that Castle won't have any more impact. Well, still reinforced, but that should be enough covered by the Meister and the castle as Strike will be running deep into Hookah Balcony. Yeah, it looks like that ruins. Yep, the camera's gonna be somewhere in ruins. Unfortunately, fortunately, I say now you, that will that camera will not be thrown out of the map as that was something that used to happen frequently. Ooh, one more cam in office, I believe Strike is saying, but he generally brought an AK instead of a PMM. Not even a PMM on the side brings the GSH. That's actually kind of impressive. Oh, and they found the Valkyrie camp without an IQ. Color me impressed. Very good eyesight. The so that color is flicking. Just gave it away for Main Jedi to find it. On first, the first look. So, oh. So what do you think they're going to fuse first? I guess would be the most interesting question. I say fuse is brought just to clear the ADSs for the Ying. At, as soon as the um the fuse cluster charges clear the ads and the other gadgets around it's a free entry for ying pop breach into the site with ying candela uh let's see if those do anything and then we destroy a fair amount of stuff yeah and ying takes out strike on the first floor which means that the valkyrie is now down to ying he's now yinging the stairs doubly over one of them manages to get taken by the ads and let's see if he knows this is the proning person. He does not, and Jaws takes out Double B, proning on the stairs with the SMG-11. That means the Ying is gone, which means that our only friend here happens to be the, thir the Thatcher, which now Thatcher's all of the EMPs, all the electronics. And let's see if the Fuse will be able to leverage that, especially with that door closed off and the only thing left being that rotation. Oh, my love is taking damage. So he knows there's a Maestro proning right behind the hookah dust. Yeah, and I believe we still have two smokes left too, so this is going to be real messy to attempt to clean out properly. There's also one on the middle of the stairs. And, oh, irregular trying to find the maestro behind. And, and that there's... maestro cam. The plant's going down. And it's a cancel before it happens. Jaws just applying pressure, but gets taken down by a Dacia's coming up oh. the stairs. And 
Femo finds a headshot on the regular, Audacious finds another one on Femo. It's, it's a 2v3. Maestro is still proning somehow behind that desk. I'm not sure how he's still alive in any particular fashion. At full, he not at full out out yet. the plant hasn't gone down. <laughs> As they shot him, will he end up dying or will it actually be landed? Oh, oh and he got so it off. Low. There are two people who are extremely low and then arms managed to take out Audacious with the sliver of health. We're going to see that Monty will be able to hold it if anyone will notice the fuse outside. Oh, runs out arms. Now we're long arm into fusing. Will he be managed to land it before people come in and take a look? And now you're functionally forcing him in. There's no health left. And it looks like everyone's dead. They managed to pull it out. Oh, As a jumpy guy. Oh my, they did it! Yeah, I think it was the greediness on the maestro, the greediest ball sticking it down on the maestro cam is what ended up doing them in in this particular case. But well played by PSA in this particular case. They managed to win on their side of the defender-sided map, at least favor on the when they were attacking, and then they managed to get it working for their defensive side and go 3-0. So good on them. Two team, two full sides of double digits with arms going an impressive 16 and three. Great. Oh, heavy lifting going on from arms, even though there was like definitely perfect support from the, the rest of the team, but 16. Yeah, that was a very, very, very impressive showing, I'd say in this particular case. And we will be taking a quick five minute break before the next map, which I believe is Border, and PSA will be attacking this one too. Yep. I think that will definitely be a very good look. And and honestly, at this point, especially with PSA doing such a fantastic job on IIT's map, I don't know if it was just an unfamiliarity with playstyle, but. Uh,
we are now back from our quick five minute break and before we head into border with PSA attacking we just want to talk about what happened in coastline real quick yeah what, one of the biggest things we saw was that IAT had a habit of not droning and that's what ended up as we noticed costing them the last round one of the big things that we saw was that one of the Yank and Dolls was actually eaten by, at least specifically in the Rasta, it was eaten by an ADS, and it seemed like, at least from what we could tell, that IAT did not note that in any particular fashion. It ended up getting killed by the proning smoke on the stairs. And it did cost them the entire match, too, as it being match point when it happened. And we will be heading into banning phase for Border, and IAT will be banning out Buck. Buck is a solid pick, especially when they're defending first. That means that they are going to like the almost any of the traditional two sites, either Workshop or Armory. Both of those are heavily affected by the existence of a Buck. And it also feels like it's a target ban for ARMS. ARMS is just doing exceptionally well with Buck, and PSA will be banning Ying. Oh, Yings are scary when they come in through Sandwich Window. Yeah, definitely an interesting take here, as we saw very little Ying used on the last map, where Ying is also very useful on such a close, tight map, such as Coastline. We really only saw the Ying come out in the last few rounds with not really, to not particularly much effect. But now we see on the defender, on the attacker side, we saw Maestro Ban, which is definitely interesting. So it seems like PSA likes Echo a lot more, at least on this particular map. And it looks like it's going to be an opening for Glass, at least, because Glass will be using those smokes to get, get some clear vision only for himself while not getting disturbed by the maestro at all. Yeah, so it looks like smokes are now live as we have all sets of smokes live, unlike the last one where we had two sets of smokes completely gone. And Mira now taken out, which is definitely an interesting ban. I've never found, personally, Mira particularly useful on this map. Though, of course, Mira is always useful, so it's just less useful than on some of the others. So I think that Mira ban is definitely an interesting choice. Well... There's a saying for PSU, where PSU wins border, as they recall. However, we'll have to see if this also applies for PSA. Yep, and in this case, we have good old PSA attacking first, as we saw on both, at least the normal as both of them are attacking here. And we have a very interesting skew. We actually have Leeson live, which makes the Monty a little bit yes less useful but the inclusion of the IQ does help a fair amount and a Kaid coming out too trying to make sure that that wall does not open we have lots of wall uh, hard breach denial here and both a Kaid mute and a bandit going really all in in this pretty case is that mute is six picking now onto a dock so that we have that one extra three armor ACOG and IQ will be going to a Blackbeard and one thing to note is that Thermite is not banned yet PSU is sticking to the Ivana pick and, and, I and IQ 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 will stay. IQ is becoming IQ. As now we're going to do a quick recap of both the attacking and defending operators. On the defending side for IIT, we have a Legion, Valkyrie, Bandit, Kaid, and Doc. And on the attacker side, we have an IQ, Monty, Habana, Dokebi, and Capital. So, especially as we noticed, that's the Dokebi is an interesting pick, especially into the prospective three more homers that we're going to be expecting to see here. And I'm so curious in how PSU is going to be using Hibana instead of Thermite, because Thermite's not banned at all, yet they're choosing to opt to the Hibana instead. Yeah, Thermite, at least from my personal experience, is traditionally a fair amount better on this map because just one charge, if you can get it off, will just blow up the entire wall. Also, important to note here. There's no particularly clean way to get rid of Kai charges because we don't have a Thatcher, we don't have any real frag grenades, and we have the IQ, which will tell you where they are, and with no Twitch, that's going to make it extremely hard to actually get rid of. Unless the IQ shoots from below, and the wall, the, the floor is pretty soft to be able to do that. Yeah, it's just depending on how placement ends up being. Like, the Rotilla Claw over on office side, I do not believe that that will actually be able to be shot. Or at least I'm not entire. It's, I'm not entirely clear if that is the case, because of how damage works through floors with a pistol. Hmm. If it's covered by a metal bar, then it looks like Vault's trying to run out. And oh, Strike <laughs> tries to break the barricade, but finds Erzir and looks right behind it too. And, and a fast clamp being committed by Jumpy Guy. 
Got only a minute in. Looks like we have the plank going down. Let's see if the C4 coming out will actually end up coming out okay. And they still managed to get it down with the whip C4 only blowing up actually a blob on the bookcase instead of actually killing someone. And it looks like the Capital got down and arm finishes to take out uh, uh, Audacious here. Now we're in an interesting case where suddenly only a minute into round, everything's going down at once. Where Capital is still injured, giving being the human drone as the glove and now takes out Strike. And someone ran out and got eaten by the Claymore. That's main Jedi getting taken out by Strike Claymore. Now they're just holding you in position with Monty in the corner as Doc manages to sim himself to get back up and arms cleans him up with the pistol. And now we're in a 1v4 situation here with the quick plant going down really hot fast. Legion. Yeah, and it looks like he's not gonna be able to actually win this round at all as even though he gets killed by arms with the pistol, there was no time left to even defuse. Things just went wrong for IIT from the start. <laughs> Unfortunate wallbang from um, the Capital taking away one of their players and the fast plant not being called out early on. Yeah, I would almost chalk that up to a small amount of negligence because you saw the there was someone on top of cabinet or at least on the other side. And they didn't even notice that anyone was at least on the balcony in any form. We didn't hear anyone walking up. And you think that even though. Yeah. So in that case, that was the um, Kaid in that particular case, right? Who ended up getting killed as they were breaking the barricade. So there's an interesting point here that no one heard them walk down the walkway. Like Monty with a shield up, even though the barricade was still there, is actually very, very should be relatively loud at least from my experience it was definitely interesting that they decided to ignore the signals or it's at least stop. yeah pay I'm attention to that yep and now we have a clash coming out in armory lockers to try and fight that monty push which isn't going to be happening this time as we saw monty six pace off into an iq so in this particular case on the defender side we have a lesion echo we didn't see an echo last time did we we did come not see an echo <laughs> come to think of it a lesion echo smoke Kaid and a Clash. And then on the attacker side, we have a Blackbeard, a IQ, and then a Thermite, Thatcher, and then a Capital. This actually leads towards more of an indication that they're going to decide to do an Armory Breach instead of an Office Breach. And also, the sheer inclusion of an Echo, I think, will help, significant on, help significantly on IIT side. Especially a Clash being a human intel just walking around with a shield will benefit IIT extra information just by body checking yep and definitely the iq with a thatcher and a thermite is going to be extremely potent especially with no jaeger thermite just going to be able to throw all of his grenades anywhere let's see if the spawn peak actually pans out from audacious here and i don't believe it will it seemed like everyone panned out to audacious's left in their stereo right or we'll yeah. find anyone just a little bit confused gonna have to walk back into office yep as now it is interesting to see that that fountain wall is not reinforced so audacious was actually on a soft wall when he was checking that drone there and usually we see these days that that wall is reinforced. Mm -hmm. as we really know. open to pre-fires if you don't, if you aren't careful from the office hallway yeah as we see uh double p being uh droned out multiple times narrowly missing the head of iq just by virtue of iq not being aggressive enough to peek that quite yet doing some yeah. very small peeks and now they know exactly where he is it looks like he's still in cctv yeah and then uh strike getting droned out by the good old echo drone and being echo drone and let's see if uh double p will be actually be able to pan out. So we have two people actually watching that sign now both the echo and the lesion lesion on a sliver of health actually holding that side and Blackbeard up on ventilation with one smoke uh, canister being used already this early into the round with only a minute 30 left and two smoke canisters left. Notably, aside from the smoke and the echo, there are no actual hard defenses with the good old class just sitting I'm in just that window. just face checking arms on the balcony. <laughs> you cannot see anything here now. <laughs> it, being progressively shocked periodically. This is a great spot for vision. Oh, oh, speaking of which, Strike takes out Audacious and Strike takes out another one. Double P being cleared out from CCTV and now full control for PSA. Yeah, double kill there from the east stairs by Strike. Now let's see if the man on the desk there, the smoke with the shotgun, is going to be able to take out Strike. And Strike just walks in my uh, without too much. 
Did he even get hit much by that? No, he only got a third of his health taken off, and both of them crouch again. Miss each oh, other! Miss each other! No! That's a 3k for strike on the head saw. Nice chest time. And that's a 4k for strike, and nearly an ace as Jaws comes in from the other side. It manages to take out a regular. Yikes! The timing! The timing covered by a monitor in office. Oh no. That's a yikes for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. That'll be two rounds for a PSA at this point. Yeah, especially on a map that is traditionally skewed significantly more defender sided than especially even the other two. We have a six zero one scar line for strike at this point. Yikes. Right, so now popping off. I mean, yeah. <laughs> so at this point we're in Vent's workshop with the Dot Castle Kaid Mutant Ella. Maybe that's prospectively going to stay in an IQ, Thatcher, Thermite, Habana, and Capital. Habana gets a little bit better, especially when you don't have a buck to try and just opening up the upstairs floor. Finally committing to a double hard breach. You could even triple hard breach if they wanted to. Wouldn't and then matter, that uh, possibly. Yeah, and now the uh, Maverick gets getting sw six picked into a Jaeger as it looks like uh, PSA is now hard locked into the IQ, Thatcher, Thermite, Habana, Capital. And on the defender side, we have a Doc castle let's see if i can do this from memory before it pops up and nope that's a no-go that's a castle doc jaeger kaid and mute sometimes there's teams where if one site defense doesn't work out do you either persist on doing it and keep on trying it over again over and over again trying to fix it or they go somewhere else and it looks like it's iit deciding on it's time to move to a different site right below yeah especially with two viable bomb sites at least two more viable bombs, I shall say. It's definitely a little bit more viable. So now I'm mostly curious, what practice do you particularly follow when you're playing Siege? Well, if it doesn't work by a sliver of like, maybe like one mistake and it costs you the round, maybe you can try it again, however. Hmm, not sure what they're trying to do here. Yeah, it looks like a traditional hold. There are no impacts. There's only one, or there are two impacts being used upstairs. It seems like to make rotation. There's only one C4, and it looks like both the castle and the Kaid will end up being upstairs, using the castle to make an upstairs relative hold, even though that castle is only protecting against people running in and not from soft walls. It is important to note, though, that we only have breaching charges to be able to take care of anything like that, as we got no buck. And surprising that the hatches have not been opened yet for the rotate it it, it does give vertical um vision from armory into workshop door yeah and let's see if we get a thermite charge used upstairs as they have no particularly good way to defend against that, as i believe the kaid they have no eyes on the thermite just breaching that wall open because so i believe the kaid opening. yep and there isn't enough time that's gonna whip and he also whipped by getting it stuck on the uh the support up top is that just takes out Jaws from somewhere and then Irregular almost dying to the Thermite. So now the spread is actually. Ooh, Mick Damage is jumping with the grenade. Ooh, that was a good headshot from Jumpy there. Let's see if he finds a second. Nope, he misses the castle on the edge of the ACOG. The castle manages to get away. At least to fight a little bit more right here on the top floor and try and hold it against two people. A little bit of backup called up called up with the dock helping. There's three on West Balcony and there's two versus three up here on Armory. Yeah, Doc aggressively vaulting as Jumpy Guy manages to take out the dock and Audacious as he aggressively jumped through the rotation hole made in the uh, small office. It looks like they now have armory control. A nope, they take that as a negatory there, as uh, Double V manages to take out Jumpy Guy. And now they see him and both getting caught on the edge of the ACOG again as Double V takes out arms and Strike takes out Double V. Now we're in a 2v2 situation, favoring the defense slightly, mostly by health. A lot by health. Well, let's see oh, if... The health is just blinking, almost gone. Yeah, and let's see if the attacker side can make anything out of this. With only 40 seconds left, functionally being trapped upstairs, more or less. And then Havana, the only one able to get those hatches open because of those castle barricades. Mitch and I just chilling on site, workshop, looking at the angle all the way into east stairs. And Mech 11 holding the rotate from the server into ventilation. Yeah, it seems like 
the attackers just got FOMOs because they're nowhere in your sight. There's no way they're really going to get in there, at least in efficient fashion, unless we do something utterly spectacular. And let's see. Oh, they broke it from the outside. It looks like uh, Femo is now going to plant as the mute misses a fair number of shots with the MP5 and the timer goes down to zero and the defenders win their first round. So I guess for them, trying something different actually worked. For PSA, I believe their plan with Capital and Hibana Luffs was for Capital to watch the rotate hole. However, the mute just got to freely walk and take out the Hibana. Yeah, I think he was actually watching not the rotate hole, but the doorway from the main hall that views the outside. Because I don't believe they actually knew that that was opened. I mean, they it's usually open anyway, but they but the sight line that was made because they didn't have any way to breach the top wasn't particularly great. And we see a cap can. Oh boy. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And no IQ, oh, there is an IQ and a Thatcher that makes cap can stock a little bit worse, but it all depends on the kind of push that PSA is going to try to make here. And that Kaid is now being hot swapped into something. We'll see how that actually ends up panning Unless out. Unless it's another Kaid to a Kaid, then it stays. Never mind. Frost! Oh boy. We are on we are getting ready for an interesting time here as we have a Frost Jaeger dot cap can and lesion. Trap meta coming in hot. And on the defender side, we have an IQ, Thatcher, Thermite, Zofia, and Capital. So this is going to be extremely interesting, especially with the Frost Mats. Let's see if we can see some late place Frost Mats. And that might actually be useful, but it looks like we're going to have two leverage right there with or at least one place right on the other side of the cabinet there from the balcony side. As now we are moving into our standard uh, prep phase. On a side note, IQ can only detect electronic devices. That means Frost not being an electronic device, they have to really be careful when they're droning this. Now let's see how vigilant the defenders are about drones so that nobody actually sees that Frost bat that's over on the cabinet side. And it looks like they're even going to be putting an ADS down to protect it. Let's see if that actually stands for long enough so that so. Oh, uh, so what's your over-under on someone getting hit by a frost map this round? Oh my. If, unfortunately, the IQ doesn't know the frost map's there, but it goes for the captain traps to clear, that's gonna be really sad. Double frost map, that's a commitment. So considering they're both in the same place, and I don't believe a drone saw it, since I don't believe we saw a drone on that side. They have they not seen it yet. Definitely not <laughs> yet. Yeah. It's you gotta put the claymore down. I believe it's down, and I believe it is seeing the appropriate angle. We hope. Hopefully. Let's some long needles into the CCTV, making some little sight lines available. Yeah, making a small hole into break room, they're now gonna be pushing into CCTV side right now. Seeing if this pans out, and then the Thatcher coming in from their side push and trying to clear out a little bit of that close hallway. Or the close. Oh no! Frost is down somehow! As Double P managed to get it, and then Strike takes out Double P. Now this is now falling apart at the seams just by virtue of the incidental team kill. What Let's happened? I don't entirely know. Let's see if uh, IIT can pull this through on this defended ground, especially with those Frostman still being up, though it doesn't look like they'll be particularly useful as they seem to be doing a armory take as we see the uh, Thermite getting that wall open with the rumble and screen shake that we saw there. And let's see if that actually will end up bringing things to fruition as Thatchers are being tossed in to behind half wall. The Thermite is watching some repel outside. An rather easy, um... Throw my exothermic charge going down with nothing to deny it, not even the meat jammer nor bandit charges. And Chris Capital will be going through, but Irregular finds a headshot on to strike. Trying to exit the doorway. He clipped someone else for a fair amount, and now we have a whole lot of people with not a lot of health, and it looks like the plant will be going down soon, but I don't think they've cleaned out the one behind the half wall, which is the cap can, I believe. Oh, nice long angle looking through office, and we'll find Joss through it. Yeah, now we're suddenly in a 3v3 situation, actually somehow favoring the defense as a cap can trap kills someone! <laughs> Arms uh, through the IQ! Even IQ, you should have seen the trap. And jumping are running to the default plan spot and gets unnoticed, but the cap can will find it behind the half wall and tries to connect some shots with the grenades popping out and jumping out, be taken out by impact grenade and main Jedi will take Femo down to secure the round four. 
for IIT. Fantastic to up by IIT. And wow, that was a ride. Almost a 3v5, losing two members, Double P and Audacious, early on. Yikes! That cap can coming in clutch. The IQ should have checked. They knew the cap can was there. It wasn't even six picked off. It's and the opposite of what we expected. We expected him to look for cap can traps, clear them, and step on the frost mat. Yeah, the push just didn't come out for that. And I think it's interesting to point uh, point to make here is that there was plenty of time left. I believe there's still like 50 seconds in the round, and that's when the IQ died. So there's still plenty of time to look, but just trying to push into sight to try and get that advantage. And that's what Capcan's good for, people pushing too hard, and Capcan just blows up in your face. And this time, IIT will be taking it downstairs into customs inspections and supply room for the last defense round. And Falk looking to six pick. Three seconds, seconds left. left. On to Valkyrie. Falk. All right. You're confident in your pick. You can stick with it. Yep, and then we have a Zofia onto a Twitch, at least on the attacker side. So on the attacker side, we have an IQ, Thatcher, Thermite, Twitch, and Capital. And on the uh, defending side, we have a Legion, Valkyrie, Jaeger, Doc, and Capcan. Bringing back the Capcan as it saw some previous success here. They saw that that managed to get someone, so let's see if they'll get him again. And it looks like CCTV will be reinforced instead of being open. That's gonna be CCTV? Yeah, are they? That's gonna be really interesting. That's especially not normally something done, as it looks like they are gonna be doing a CCTV hold, but with no real rotation. That's gonna be a really interesting play. Or I guess not. They're just gonna leave that to be, and there's gonna. As far as we can tell right now, especially as the round is our Valkyrie's gonna take a risky camo front. It seems like that has panned out. Being on the post on the wall on the outside on the studio right hand side as you can see there on the wall let's see if anyone actually ends up going upstairs because at the current time it looks like there's no upstairs hold and if um psa does notice this it will be a free opening for the hatch making it more easier for them to approach the site and arms already in cctv finds so that nobody is in there with him uh there is one upstairs the fountain that you see it's right there the yeah and it is important to note that the only way they're going to be able to open those is with a thermite. So actually, that's a pretty good sign for IAT in this particular case. Awkward ceramic floors. <laughs> and the metal bars. Yeah. But um, you're going to end up with an interesting case where, where IAT now has to use the thermites to be able to break that open as the Twitch drone's wreaking havoc. You see it running around down there, getting at least a number of tasers off before it's actually found in Main Jedi, just frantically looking for the Twitch drone and coming up with nothing. But as I was saying, there is now, they really only have to use the thermite to get the hatches open. And without a Habana, that's a lot of wasted utility that could be getting, like, the outside of Visa open. There's a passport, there is a tension you can also open, and the box already running out from each stairs. What? I am, wait, is this a bug? I guess that's a bug. We found a bug, ladies and gentlemen. I yeah. think that's a spectator bug. Yeah. Yeah, that looks to be a spectator bug. And we are in an interesting time because everybody's detected at once. As both the Legion is also upstairs, the Thatcher narrowly missing the Legion. Now let's see how the rest of this pans out here. It's as if it's a lion. It's detected forever. Yep, everyone is always detected. And now we're in an interesting place where it looks like the Thermite's now going to be blowing open the side, uh, uh, the Visa passport side. And we'll see with 58 seconds left. Let's see if that actually comes to fruition. Shots. A couple of his melees as he jumped in, gets hit by a cap can. Now he's on low health. He should have known that that go off. As he's planting, Jaws comes in and takes out McLovin. Let's see if this plank goes down and anyone notices. It looks like nobody's going to find him. Nobody's found him and he gets down. He gets it down as they manage to refrag and the docks getting up outside him. Double P takes out Jumpy Guy, Strike takes out a regular, and Double P then also takes out Strike, and now we're in a 3 feet functionally a 2v3 situation as one person on basically no health and and that's a 3k for double p yeah the kill and... feed pulling up femo taking down double p arms taking down irregular i believe yeah from upstairs they managed to use the breach charge to get the sight line going and make sure that that stuck three three two before and then round is now swapped for PSA to be taking defense and IAT on attack. 
importantly, this was the exact same scoreline we saw last map. So do you think that this is actually going to turn out any differently than before? Hmm. Questionable, actually. But it should be more favorable towards defense as it is a defender map. It's just that IIT could have pulled it off as long as they didn't make a little like small mistakes here and there. The first round actually cost them a little bit. Yeah, I feel like it's going to be the same thing that happened last time. You see a Glass switch to being a Monty, and we only have a Smoke, Bandit, and a Valkyrie. So that's actually a fair amount of denial for the Monty. But we're going to be, and the Echo actually being leveraged. And I think it's going to provide an interesting case where, as we saw last time, the attackers going, or the defenders going 1-3 one, uh, one, favoring them. We'll see if this turns out exactly the same, especially on their own map, because importantly, the other one was not their chosen map coastline that is and with hibana thatcher and thermite on the board john's gonna have fun time dealing with those trying to bandit trick on left guard wall it should be importantly a little bit easier as there aren't really i mean there are frag grenades and there are ads's so let's hope that the ads's are creatively placed such that they don't get eaten by the thatcher emps i'm going to be enforcing this wall protecting any sightlines from CCTV into metal bars. Yeah, we're in a particular case where it looked like Jumpy Guy was actually about to reinforce the left-hand side of the small wall facing the doorway. And that's generally in the direction case here. As it looks like, ooh, they're gonna have someone looking up from below. I don't know where this goes. Do you know where this goes? This looks like right behind the long desk. Oh, it's, yeah, it's a Valkyrie camera for behind long desk and that's a very interesting clip we'll see if that either gets seen because there is no iq as we're 30 seconds in looks like it's gonna have an interesting time let's see if bandit will actively oh. trick here oh i've never seen that before that's actually really that's interesting that it's behind the tv screen as audacious takes out strike rather early the jaeger is off the board really early actually it looks like he was trying to peek into the um from long hallway into east and got taken out by the Type 89. It looks like Colors is clear for it. It's just if he wants to pop in through the window. And apparently only one person in workshop. And the wall's open, by the way. I'm surprised the bandit didn't actively try to trick. Because I felt like, especially with the lineup, that would have been something that could have been done. Definitely. Right? And because... The shots are just being fired left and right in arms. Is going to take down Audacious with a headshot and oh drop connecting some shots? No, he no. would take shots instead. Yeah, the reflex site biting him a little bit where shooting where the center of the reflex instead of the tip of the reflex, which actually changes the center of your sight, so it actually shifts where you shoot slightly. Which makes it a little bit more difficult if you don't use it all the time on all your guns. And double P looking to pressure from metal bars. No EMP. Yeah, no, no EMPs left. Just clearing out all that mess that was generated down there. Let's see if that C4 will actually be able to be leveraged. And it looks like they're gonna try and position to do a door plant. I don't know if anyone actually knows what a door plant. I think it getting shotgunned and taken out by FEMA. It looks like we're gonna have a smoke grenade creatively placed above the wall, and it looks like the Valkyrie knows to be a Valkyrie camp up, up in the upper right. We see there as Arms takes out McLovin as well. Now we're in a two v four situation. Two people at low health and on the defender side and two people at full and double piece looking to flush out arms from below in the workshop right now yes i believe we still have that c4 and that has not been used that as double p takes out arms as well from downstairs so that c4 is now gone we only have one c4 left from the bandit who's over at armory side i believe by the looks of it yep he still is over there watching that we just have the thermite in the office's doorway and i'm not entirely sure where the thatcher is and thermite's planting as they now know, as the Jaws company just wide peaks. And C4 from below. The C4 from the bandit actually taking out main. So as the Thatcher runs in to try and cover for his friend, the C4 then comes in and takes out the Thermite. Arms from below is playing so patiently, not using the C4 early on, and just using committing with his primary gun, the MPX, to just shoot out the Monty early on. Yeah, I wonder if there's also some leverage from the Deagle as well, if any damage was done by that, because that may be done just to make some nice sightline holes, mm -hmm. or at least to open up the floor, as it only, I believe, takes half a, uh, 
three shots to make a hole through a floor. Not a large one, but large enough to be able to fire a gun through and or throw a C4 through. And Jumpy Guy having being alive till the end just made it so much easier for denying plants. They had the C4 available, they had Yokai chargers available. It just made it almost impossible for IIT to use the 20 seconds to plant. Yep, and right now we're going to be going to Vent Workshop as we're in six pick here, and that Legion is going to be swapped out for a smoke, so that means that Monty is going to have a lot of fun, relatively, of course, because there still is a smoke bit. <laughs> Two C4s, an Echo, and a smoke. So I'm not entirely sure how much fun that Monty's going to have, but we're in for an interesting time. So in this particular case, it looks like they're leveraging that rarely used mechanic, which happens to be that smoke damages Finca more, which would be something that we interestingly rarely see, as that smoke was a six pick here. So now on the attacker set, we have a Thatcher, Zofia, Thermite, Finca, and... Monty, and on the defender side, we have a Jaeger, Mute, Echo, Smoke, and Bandit. And having a Smoke actually pays off with the Monty trying to push through um, Archives last time. Yeah, and that definitely... I think the 6-pick is going to be a lot more relevant, because since they even kept the Finca, that's going to make Finca relatively worse. Right. It, because... Again, mechanics that happen to exist that everyone forgets about. It deals double twice, ticks twice as fast from the smoke when you're thinking. And if you're Monty, just walking into the smoke while thinking, that is just disaster. Yeah, I believe it takes off a good 60% of your health for each little bit you're in there since it ticks twice as much, and that's relatively brutal. Especially when as a Monty, that means that you can die from a C4 to the slight right of your shield, whereas before you wouldn't have been able to. Now it looks like we're pushing from the front here as main Jedi comes in, takes window, out, and a regular takes out Jaws already. So that's the mute gone from somewhere. It looks like they're just doing a hard push already into sight. His Finka's already in sight and now Finka boosting. At least I think anyway, as a Valkyrie camp gets taken out. Yeah, they're pretty much on site, just clearing out his arm, takes out a regular now, so the Fink is dead after getting one charge off here. And now, arms is somewhere, presumably these, and there's a shotgun, a strike takes out McLovin. So the Monty's dead. Yeah, so the Monty's now dead, as he got killed from above, I think the hatch, actually. Knowing that in IIT-9, knowing that there's strike above, they're trying to flush him out, one from armory, hallway, and one from office side. Yeah, and that's also how make, uh, our good friend Finka died as well. So if you notice here, the Jaeger is also upstairs, so it looks like the hatch. Now they know that someone is under the hatch, and Double B is going to see if he can leverage that at all. And now we're in a 3v4 situation with two people upstairs and two people downstairs. A solo push upstairs by the Zofia here. Well, that's pretty bold, and we'll take down Arm. And, but Strike will be countering and taking Audacious off the board. Even yep. out, and it'll be 2 to 3 and now Thermite's also upstairs. Let's see if they can clean up the Bandit, which is also upstairs. Let's see if the Bandit is ballsy enough to actually trick. He might actually be able to cross and do it. But nope, it looks like he has dropped. You see how both people upstairs as Thermite okay. gets Still to there. Oh! And main Jedi with a fantastic shot onto Strike. Now we're in a 2v2 situation here, slightly favoring the Defender side. At least in terms of health, but... Defender still has a lot of utility left with 50 seconds to go with both all three smoke cans, I believe, and the Echo still up. He used one? Okay, so that, so that case is actually two smoke cans. I apologize, left. Oh, one oh, smoke one can left. left. I don't even left. I don't even know where the other one got used. But still, either way, we still got a can left, which matters in barbed wire, I guess. That may or may not be put down. But it seems like uh, PSA is in a commanding, relatively favorable position with 24 seconds left and nobody else on site. Let's see if they can get him on the drop. Finds the Thatcher's head and jumping guy knows where he is now. And Double P taking a little roundabout, jumping off into the waiting room, main lobby, and looking to enter workshop where Echo is currently standing. And Samuel takes down main Jedi with a shotgun. Double P finds the jump jumpy guy is a 1v1. With two seconds left, he has to find the frag. Oh no, and he's proning, he's proning, and he checks the wrong side of the desk as the defenders now go to round seven and a 5 2 favored. All because the smoke was on the left side of the desk. Fast decision making coming from IIT Double P last second. However, it just turned out to be unlucky. He looked at the wrong side of the desk. Yeah, I think it's definitely an interesting case where they didn't push together. As you saw, uh, Double P was actually only in the doorway as 
like approaching the doorway as the thermite dropped. So thermite was actively inside and then got shotgun to death by the time double P even got actually into the room. So I think they may have been actually be able to land that if they managed to just get in there together. Definitely. But of course it was still very close either way. And they almost got it. You just got to check the left side first, I guess. First little preference, right or left. But in this case here, we have an interesting thing here with a blitz being taken in with no lesion. So let's see if we mm -hmm. see a six pick on the lesion at all here as the attackers are going to see if they can claw this back from this being match point. And no six pick coming from either side. And they will be sticking to the lineup. And for the attack, there'll be Thermite, Dasher, Blitz, Monty, and a Nomad. And defense, I believe there was an Ella on the board. Yes, a Vigil, Jaeger, Echo, Smoke, and an Ella will be played. Now, humor me, if we could pan over there, is the Ella using a shotgun? Because that's always an interesting time if the Ella is using a shotgun. Hmm. No, it is the Scorpion this time. We will not have the Ella shotgun fun time. And so in this case, we see a relatively normal setup for the third site here. Uh, the third site being not bathroom because bathroom is not particularly fantastic and this one is slightly better. It's just not been preferred by a lot of teams at all. And no shotgun and smoke, bring an FMG instead. I wonder how they're going to get things actually open because they only have two sets of impact grenades at this point because the smoke's bringing the barb and Ella doesn't have any anymore. So they, interestingly enough, only have two impacts for rotation. So that's going to be interesting to see how that actively affects how this defense is going to pan out. And it looks like this time they're actually doing a harder upstairs hold. And one's already used for armory. And one, I believe, is used downstairs for customs. Yep. So now at this point, they're actually, even though they are reinforcing the floor, it seems, they are actually putting people upstairs instead of letting that go free. And now we see a nomad. First time seeing a nomad come out. Looking at the long angle from pedestrian customs. Looking for passport now, dropping off. However, that wall is entirely reinforced. Yeah, and we have a Nomad being put up on the outside of little blue room there so that we'd be able to get anyone who runs out. But it looks like we're going to end up thermiting that wall and breaking that thing open. And there is no mute or any way to prevent a breach. So now we have the entirety of that custom side just nice and open for the attackers to get line of sight. In. And I believe they have not made a hole looking down at the little entry that the Thermite made. So it will be covered as of now from CCTV. Yeah, and it looks like Audacious takes out Jumpy Guy as the Echo's down really early. That's rather unfortunate. Now they have no good way as FIBA manages to knife someone. Knifes the Monty. Yikes. Oh, it looks like he ran out and got the Monty. <laughs> okay. And now Irregular takes out Fimo and PP takes up Jaws and Arms takes out Irregular. Now suddenly we're in a well, my goodness. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Audacious oh. takes down Arms and Strike takes out Audacious. Okay, five and kills I coming on in five seconds. That was a little bit too quick. Yeah, and now suddenly we're in a 1v2 situation and basically no bullets. <laughs> we only oh have 25 my. left in the bag. <laughs> as they do have, as the attackers do have possession of the diffuser with 54 Meta. seconds left. And two air traps have been used to prevent runout, so there's only one that they could use for potentially post-plant. And it's the Nomad planting while Thasher double P looks to cover. Is the Claymore going down? Possibly an air trap. Oh, barely misses. Double P coming from customs. And he only has like three bullets left in his bank. Got 11 bullets. Let's see if he can actually get someone. Yikes. Double and P believe... is in customs with him, but he does not know. And he barely misses. Is he bullets? Hey, Blizzard, you might as well use your pistol at this point. Gets air jab, doesn't touch the claymore. I think, I think Strike now sees the claymore as he somehow is going. No, he gets air jabbed out of the claymore. Air jabbed out of the claymore. He would have 100% walked into it as PP then takes the wide sweep and takes out Strike. Awkwardly, that air jab saving our good friend Strike from the claymore twice. Oh man, a, a rush coming from on on the kill feed. Just five kills coming all at once, trading back and forth. And eventually leaving Strike with a 1v2 with almost like 30 bullets yeah, in his entire mag. Yeah, it seemed like as we saw, as we were watching the upstairs, it seems like everyone pushed sight at once. 
especially as they figure that they saw a good fair number of people upstairs. So now we have a PSA now in a fa- more, slightly more favorable position going back to Armory Lockers, which they won the first time they actually went. The second time? Yeah, the first time they went to it. So we've gone all the way back around rotation. So now we have a, th- a very traditional attempted defense of Armory. Maybe we'll actually pressure into doing some bandit trick instead of just leaving it to be blown open. Now we get to see the Glass Elite skin, which is something we don't see every day. As Glass will be coming in to get our sight lines everywhere. I just want to say Glass highlight is pretty good. It's a little coin flip, and you see through the coin zooms in. I think yeah. Glass is pretty good. It's definitely one of the best portraits there. I love his portrait a lot. Him and Maestro are probably my two. The Elite skin and the Maestro are probably my two favorite portraits. In terms I of like on the Glass one especially. The little hat he gets, and the look. Yeah, he just has the giant fur coat. It's fine. It's okay. It's fine. He's, He's casually just showing off. Yeah, that's obviously something you wear into a specific tech op situation. So that's perfectly normal. Don't worry about it. You're doing spec ops and you're wearing a giant fur coat. It's fine. Perfectly normal in a strategic, real life simulated plan. Yes, 100%. Yes, definitely. It looks like ARMS is doing the same thing, just reinforcing the little sight line from CCTV into metal detectors. And Fountain will be completely reinforced. Yep, as we noticed last time, Fountain was actually soft. I don't believe it was actually to any real veteran, but now it's being reinforced. That means that the Echo can sit in there pretty safely, as we have concrete underneath, so it can't even be fragged from below. And it looks like we're going to be... Oh, interesting camp spot again. We, we learned something here today, too. Yep, and as ARMS is opening that up, we have people approaching from all sides now as they're going to see if they can clear out CCTV first by the looks of it. And we have two people on the balcony. We have Thermite and I believe Thatcher on the west side here. Yep, Thatcher on the west side plus one other who is carrying, and Nomad who is carrying the good old diffuser. And it looks like Bandit might actually be actively tricking this time. He's definitely trying, and the, there's no Hibana this time. Instead, it's just a Nomad and um, last of the edition. Yeah, and especially with now we have the advanced tech deployment, it definitely is significantly easier to bandit trick them before because you're not committed into going for it. That EMP may have been a little bit too early. Yeah, he only has two EMPs left, and it looks like none of the bandit charges were actually affected here. Because he's going to attempt to go for it after the next Thatcher as he's holding it out in preparation. Let's see if this actually pans out. He has two of the things left. Let's see if he gets it off. And no, he retreated! So he's not going to be able to actually pull that bandit trick off. And it looks like the yokai above will be giving intel, but no, main jelly disconnects and there can't be a rehost because it's after prep time. Well, we've now committed to this. Let's see how this ends up panning out as Audacious made to take out Jaws, evening out the score. So now we're at an interesting point where Glass is coming in and Main Jedi has come back, which now can provide crucial information to their team. Especially as now McLovin is doing the smoke thing and now pushing into his small offices in this particular case. So it looks nobody's like no one behind the half wall. Yeah, nobody's in A side, so it looks like if they can actually get in there, they should be able to play. And unfortunately, there is the echo on the desk. So if they can find wherever the echo drone is, it seems like they might actually be able to play. A strike takes out P uh, double P here. The Thatcher is now gone. I don't know. And Strike is in CCTV. As the Thermite comes in, dropping the diffuser outside, just pushing to clear out half ball. Trying to find exactly where that Echo is is very particularly unsure. He's taking a really risky gamble, trying to take it for the team. And Finca will be disoriented soon with two Sonic Bursts. And he gets taken by a C4 from below. Arm is getting enough intel from the Yokai. And currently, the Thermite is also down. That body flew. It disappeared from my screen. <laughs> it's just up to the glass. McLovin trying to find some angles. And it will be taken out by a shotgun. And we'll be, the match point will go to PSA and will take the playoffs into next round advancing. Looking for the winners from bracket B. Yeah, I definitely say this was a good showing for PSA. There was an interesting point where I think a lot of it just has to do with, I don't know if it was more so team experience, but it, it feels like to me that they just play better, even on both maps, right? Like, even though these score lines are relatively fairly similar, just the better play made the day. And that's just what it felt like. There are lots of, there were no accidental team kills on their side as we saw two come out from 
um, IIT in this particular case between the two maps, that is. And GG's I feel like it was just after seeing that GG. first map go down, I felt like it was PSA's uh, set to lose, especially winning in such great fashion off of not their map. The last round was just unfortunate for IIT with the disconnect. And they had the wall open. All they had to do was try to use a man advantage and just walk in. But then at the same time, one of your teammates disconnect and is left on the 4v4. Yeah, and important thing to know is that they did actually have one more EMP. They could have thrown that in to take out the yokai. And that was something that was not done. At least that I noticed anyway. Because they threw one early. And then they threw one to take out the bandit since the bandit didn't come back to try and bandit trick. So the Thatcher still had one left. So there was at least another one to throw to try and take out the Echo before he ended up dying to the Jaeger and CCTV. So I think there was at least a little bit more action that could have been taken in that last round. But overall, I think it was just very well played by PSA and at least a good show from IIT as well. Definitely. And we have another match coming up tomorrow for Bracket C, Grand Canyon University versus Indiana University. And looking to find bracket d bracket bracket b will be on april 13th bracket d will also be on april 13th respectively 7 p.m and 9 p.m et yep and we're gonna have some more great games for you especially then so i believe that we should probably show one more little thing which is the summer leaks we want to make sure that people sign up for those or at least they're aware of those and also you can either sign up individual as an individual or the teams with their good old CEA Summer League. And the other thing that we want to mention is, as we said, watch the other cast. So in that case, I do hope that you all actually enjoyed this cast here and hope to see you again tomorrow. I believe it is tomorrow, yeah? It is, it is tomorrow. Yeah, I hope to see you all tomorrow as well. I, myself, and Coinman1863, and with me tonight was... Alfrix, thank you for watching.